I'm uh, Dave Akerman. Uh, my profession is a software programmer, uh, so I get to travel the world writing software for different companies. Yeah, I first saw a, a YouTube video with a couple of guys and they just got a um, polystyrene foam box and put an iPod and a camera and stuff in there for, uh, and flew that. Um, and they made a great video of a step frame animation of this thing building itself. And, uh, and then the video that they took um, in a stratosphere afterwards. And I saw this and thought, well, that's really easy. This is a project which I've thought about doing before, but I didn't realise there was that little to it. So, you know, just a few random bits and pieces in a phone box, and that was enough to make a, uh, do a flight. Um, so that's what got me started. I was born in the 1960s, so I was a young child at primary school when Apollo happened. Uh, I remember sitting at home and watching these very grainy, fuzzy images of people walking on the moon. Um, and then I particularly remember Apollo 13, um, where everyone thought, I thought, they were lost, they were going to disappear the other side of the moon and not come back. Um, and that was an in incredible um, time to get interested in space. I mean, it was so, there was so much emotion in that flight um, and the, the whole world was watching it. Um, so, and, and I, I remember thinking, you know, wouldn't it be great to work for NASA and to work on the, you know, not to be a spaceman, but to actually work on the telemetry or the design or the electronics or something. I started this hobby in, uh, I think it's 2010, um, and I did a few flights using uh, a small computer called an Arduino, uh, which is a very basic microcontroller that it can do uh, the telemetry. So it can receive GPS and it can transmit the position. Um, and then I heard about the Pi. And the Pi brings, it's a much more complex and more powerful uh, processor. And it has USB on there, uh, which meant that I could then attach a webcam and take images and then send those. So it had the USB plus the power uh, to do the imaging as well. And then I could send photographs during the flight which is a big thing because if you do a flight uh, with a stills camera and it lands in the sea or the top of a tree or you just lose track of it, then you've lost everything. Uh, if you send images, then you're getting something back during the flight. The other thing is you, get, you see these pictures of the stratosphere and the blue thin line of the atmosphere pretty much in real time. So it's like you've got an eye up in the stratosphere during the flight, which is it's pretty cool. I was one of the first people to order a pie. It uh, took about three months to arrive. Um, when it did, it was an obvious um, thing for me to try and fly one under a balloon because I'd flown lots of uh, uh, balloons before. Um, so I uh, put the uh, tracker together. It took about a couple of hours to uh, modify my code from an Arduino to the Pi. Um, and then, uh, uh, then I searched the web because I thought, well, someone, must have, someone else must have done this. Um, and actually, no one had. So I, I flew the first Pi, surprisingly. Um, and um, I was trying to fly it quite quickly, but uh, the weather was bad, and I had about a two-week delay before I could fly. So in the meantime, I added the images, which was a key thing. So this was the first pie in the sky, and it was the first pie to send live images down during the flight. The Raspberry Pi Foundation brought out this uh, Babbage bear, which you can buy from their shop. And um, he's named Babbage after Charles Babbage, who basically invented, he didn't build, and he died before he could finish it, but he invented the first... Um, a computer, something that you could recognise these days as a computer. It's got arithmetic, arithmetic units and memory and things. Um, and uh, they had um, a competition and people invented names and uh, Babbage was the winner. Um, so you can buy Babbage, this is just one of them. Um, and I th when I saw it, I wondered if a Raspberry Pi would actually fit inside Babbage. And from the pictures and the, the dimensions on the website, it looked like it might fit. Uh, but there's only one way to find that. I ordered one and it fits just. It's a very tight fit in the back of him. So I managed to replace one eye with the camera, uh, fitted everything else inside. Um, and then I had a plan to fly uh, Babbage. Um, and I, I'd, for a while I'd wanted to replicate the Felix Baumgartner uh, flight um, and to have this image, <coughs> uh, which is great, of a camera above him watching him jump um, and fall to, you know, a rate of knots to rules the ground. So I thought I'd replicate that with Babbage for a slightly smaller budget, for a few hundred pounds instead of tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. So I put a plan together to fly Babbage and to do that. Um, and putting the plan together, I thought, well, why not beat it? Because Felix jumped at just below 39 kilometres, but you can get weather balloons to at least 40 kilometres, even with the same, uh, same weight that I've got here. And in fact, when I calculated it, it should be about 40. Um, so I knew there was some leeway, 
Um, he jumped at 31 metres below the 39 kilometre limit, so I set this for 39 kilometres just to beat him, just a little bit. So I built this thing with um, a camera just above him and some string nylon cord going from here. Uh, and the plan was to cut the cord um, by programming control um, at 40, uh, 39 kilometres um, and then he would then fall uh, from there. Uh, we did this and I, I spoke to Evan and uh, Liz Upton um, and they came over for the flight um, and this went to 39 kilometres and unfortunately it didn't separate. Um, and when we got the thing back afterwards I checked and this nylon cord, uh, the component that heats and cuts the cord just didn't get quite hot enough. Um, so two days later I did the same flight again but with a lot more power. So on the Monday uh, we, we flew again. So we chased this down into Dorset, that's where it's going. Um, and the, the first thing you know uh, when it, um, if the release happens is he then basically falls and the signal from uh, Babbage um, then as he rotates, because he'll just spin in the air, uh, the signal instead of being steady will go back and forth. Obviously I was quite tense because the first flight had failed at this point. Um, so we came up to 39 kilometres um, and I, t I, I turned the radio up so we could listen to the transmission from Babbage. So we hit 39 kilometres and at that point it starts burning the cord. You've got a couple of seconds for that to happen and within a few seconds of 39 kilometres hitting you could hear this very distinctive ch -ch -ch noise from the Babbage signal which was my first indication. And at that point I was ecstatic because <laughs> I knew that it actually worked. Um, all we needed to do then was to recover the two payloads. It took us maybe 10 minutes to get, get to that point. Um, and then we had to find a route because he was in the middle of a field and there were, um, it wasn't easy to get from the road to him. But we got there within maybe 20 minutes of arriving, something like that. We hope these things land in the field in the middle of nowhere, um, but, uh, which is what happened in this case. So no, no, no one else saw him. Babbage physically doesn't seem affected by the experience, but considering he, he, he withstood temperatures of minus 60 and uh, atmosphere of less than 1%, so unbreathable basically, then he's doing quite well. Um, he's, uh, he's been quite sought after in the last few weeks. Um, he's been to uh, uh, Maker Fair in New York. Um, he's been to some Raspberry Jams um, where I've presented him. So he, he's actually more travelled than I am now. So my first Raspberry Pi flight was just intended to be the first Pi and to send live images, which for me was a first as well. Um, but actually the balloon outperformed the calculation by a long way and it got up to just under uh, 40 kilometres. And that was the highest that anyone had managed to send, any amateur had managed to send uh, live images throughout a flight. So um, that was a good to have a record there. Um, since then I've beaten that a couple of times. So I think the highest I've got now is just over uh, 41 kilometres which is pretty high. Considering a couple of years ago, the highest amateur balloon flight without pictures was 38 kilometres. So things have improved quite a lot.